My mm-hmm. guess is we'll retest 22,300. The big question then becomes, do we break that level? Hello guys. Today, Master Crypto, Bitcoin, and Stocks Trader, Gareth Soloway, shares his another expert analysis. During an interview with Paul Barron Network, Soloway claims that the key for the crypto is to move further away from the FTX saga. He also dissects the Bitcoin price action and predicts about the lows of BTC and the S&P. According to a Reuters report published on February 28, American payment processors Visa and MasterCard have delayed the launch of new partnerships with crypto firms due to high-profile bankruptcies in the industry that led to increased regulatory scrutiny. The move follows a period of warming relations between payment giants and crypto firms as the popularity of cryptocurrencies exploded, with MasterCard exploring payments in USD coin and Visa targeting stablecoin settlements weeks before today's development. Both Visa and MasterCard are said to be pushing back the launch of certain products and services related to crypto until market conditions and the regulatory environment improve. This is my caveat to that, is that I I do worry we're going to get in a recession that's not going to be a normal recession, right? We've just Mm. gone through 13 years, arguably, of of an expansionary period with massive printing of money, interest rates essentially near 0%. And so to me, there's almost this scenario where we could now be stuck in a longer recessionary period than what we're normally used to. And again, part of that is the fact that if inflation doesn't come down to two or sub 2%, the Fed is not gonna be able to lower interest rates back down to where they were for the last big boom in 2021. And so again, the question is even if they drop, let's say they drop interest rates from 5% back to three and a half percent, how does this economy continue to function? And I do worry that we get in this scenario where we're stuck for a multi-year recessionary period. Mm -hmm. And I've actually gone on record in saying that I I wouldn't be surprised if the S&P doesn't make new highs for five to 10 years, at least, maybe even more. Because you're looking at uh, an era of investors that, in my opinion, are starting, I won't won't say retiring out, but they're in a position where they've kind of gone through their cycles. They're probably not going to go through another major bull run their investment classes, but in many cases, they've taken their wins and and kind of pulled the game off the table. Now you have this whole new era of under 40 investors that are repositioning how they hit the landscape. That's the question mark to me as to what is gonna be the winning scenario that plays into this. Does Wall Street get back in it? Or do we see risk assets start to get a little bit more active? That's a great, I mean, that's an amazing question, too, because it brings up the possibility that as the older generations maybe don't invest as much because they have to use that money carefully for retirement, the younger generations now are splitting their money between crypto assets and the stock market, which means there's less money to go to the stock market. So it even lends even more credence to that idea that it could be a long time before the S&P 500 really makes a new all-time high. Yeah, I, I think through the early summer months, my guess is we will retest those October lows. But I think, again, you know, the the recession that everyone's talking about will eventually hit. But my guess is likely in the second half. So kind of late summer, fall, maybe into the into the kind of November, December period. And so I think that the markets are going to be kind of on the on the kind of the cusp of wondering what's the Fed going to do, right? Because the right. positive of a recession is the Fed stops hiking and maybe cuts, but the negative of a recession is lower earnings for stocks and and maybe a troublesome um, recession that we can't get out of very easily unless the Fed comes to the rescue. So it's going to be one of those guessing games, I think, over the next you know three to four months. And then I do mm-hmm. think that ultimately it becomes a very bearish scenario for the overall equity markets and really, to be honest, all risk assets. Yeah, I was looking at this tweet from uh, the Walter Bloomberg. <laughs> Funny how he put that in there. Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon says, anyone running a business has to be prepared for a bumpy 12 to 18. This came up from CNBC. Um, are you in agreement with that right now with kind of the way this is shaping up? I really am. And again, I think we're seeing more and more signals of this where, you know, you're getting certain data points like like jobs to stay strong, but then you have other job, other kind of um, economic data points that are becoming very, very weak. And I think ultimately the jobs will weaken, but it's keeping the Fed tighter for longer. And that's actually going to be very problematic over the next 12 to 18 months. So I think, I think you're going to get in this very serious pickle for this economy. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot of fear coming in later in the year and into 2024. Yeah. 
just kind of a run at uh, Bitcoin, a little bit of a risk of a deeper pullback toward around the 20K mark. Uh, and, and I mean, think we've looked at this uh, potential of it being much lower. This kind of comes back into what I think is a, a bit of a range zone that could happen over the next few months. What are your thoughts when you look at your chart for Bitcoin between now and let's go into end of Q2, so around June, July, as we start to head into the summer? Yeah, so I do think that we're going to see some downside in Bitcoin here, and we've already seen a little bit of a pullback off the 20, uh, 25,000 marker. But let's take a look at the chart and see what we have in store here. So if we look at the chart of Bitcoin, we can see that the recent highs mirror the high pivot from the August period, right? So it makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. why that was going to be a pivot resistance point. And so what we can do is we can basically take a trend line, put it right at that high, and it's the highest point going back to when we made the uh, the cycle lows on Bitcoin here, and that's where we stopped out. Now, what we're seeing here is actually a little bit of a channel being developed. And again, channels are really handy for kind of giving us highs and lows. So what we can do is we can connect these lows here and we drag that trend line up. And then we notice that that matches the highs on Bitcoin yeah. as well from here to right here. So, so what this tells me is that you have a lot of resistance around 25,000, 25,300, but then your technical support is around 22,300. So my mm -hmm. guess is we'll retest 22,300. The big question then becomes, do we break that level? I am in the camp that eventually we do break that level and we trade back to about the 18,000, um, 400 level, which was the midpoint here of this kind of W pattern bottom. So again, I, I yep. am in the camp that we will see some trouble for the economy here over the next, um, you know, the next, at least in Bitcoin and, and the stock market, the next few months, I do think a retest of the October lows, which then brings Bitcoin back to about 18,400. Uh, a potential breakout. And the interesting thing he, he talks about is this 23.8 level right here, indicating that we could have another test of support. And I'm looking at the current chart for today on Bitcoin. We've had, this is, I think, on the four hour, yeah. And you see a, a, almost going on 12 hours of uh, runs right now where we're up here almost to that 23. Could we hit that 23.8? There's still a lot left to go. What are your thoughts about whether or not Bitcoin can hit that level of support around 23.8? Yeah, so so I assume you mean uh, resistance, right? So we're looking at price right, right now, trading at yeah twenty three thousand yes. five hundred. So I think that's what we're watching here, right? So so you're absolutely correct, is that you're getting this consolidation in the charts, and that does seem to be a pivot point. And the reason it's a pivot point is that if we look at the daily chart, and I can throw my chart up again here to take a look, yep. is we clearly see that this area here, that first kind of little topping area, that's right at twenty three eight. And so the idea here is that if you can recapture that high, it starts to tip the scales towards the more bullish side. Now, again, if we put that trend line in here, right at 23.8, you can see right now we are just below it, but you could be putting in a little bit of consolidation that could be setting up for another move to the upside. So this is kind of one of those scenarios where as a trader, I sit back and I watch because I'm not good enough to kind of determine which direction it's going to go, but it mm -hmm. will be interesting. And I agree that if we get back above 23.8 and it can stay there, let's first say for 24 hours, it then increases the probability of us making a move up again and retesting the 25,000 level. Now, if we can't get above 23.8, we it goes to the scenario that I just talked about prior, which right. is where you have to start looking at this 22,300 area on the chart. Was the amount of people, especially in the U.S., the number of investors that have been able to do this uh, quite significantly higher than this time last year. The other thing that we broke down in our own sentiment data was the demographic shift that has occurred. It seems like the under 40 appears to be shifting away from traditional assets. Do you think that even though we may see a little bit of troubled waters here, that we actually see an investor class start to rise on the digital asset side and create some solidity over there in those markets over the next year? I do think so. I think that, again, the social media 
in the world has really bought, brought to the forefront. And that's why you see this under 40 crowd, right? Once you get to the 50s yep. and the 60 year olds, it's not quite as influenced by social media, but there's so mm -hmm. much on social media about the demise of fiat currencies, which, which rightly so. I mean, when you see what the governments are doing around the globe, but it is really pushing younger investors to say, listen, I don't know about stocks. Is it a rigged game? Where is it not rigged? Well, the right now the feeling is that it's more these cryptocurrencies and the investing class of this new generation right. is absolutely looking at this as a new new place to put money. Also, all growing, everything's kind of up and to the right uh, for Ethereum. What does it look like in your chart, at least in the short term, back over into these early months of summer? Yeah, so at least in the short term, we're kind of stuck in the same kind of parallel channel that we're seeing in the uh, the Bitcoin chart. And what I mean by that is if we kind of draw a trend line like this, we can bring this down here as well and notice that we're trending sideways to slightly up. Now, the one thing I think is a positive here in the near term, and this is just talking over the next few days to a week or so, is that we had this strong move up where we tested the high and now you are consolidating. So there is a chance that we could make another attempt, just like with Bitcoin, at the recent and highs. If we do that and we can puncture it, you then have the possibility of going up and retesting that 2000 level. Now, interestingly enough, the 2000 level was the highest point on Ethereum since the, the lows were put in, right? And that's right. going back to basically August of 2022. Interestingly enough, Bitcoin has already tested that high uh, from that point. Now, granted, Ethereum made a much bigger percentage move, but it'd be interesting to see if Ethereum still needs to test that level before there's any chance of a corrective move mm. since Bitcoin already did do it. So it is something I'm watching. I would be based on the current chart in the very near term. I would be slightly bullish on um, on Ethereum here just over the next few days. And I think I think, again, with crypto, the, the key is this is right. The further away from FTX we get. And mm -hmm. the, the, the less there's new FTX scenarios, right, where you scare the market and you worry, people start worrying about, you know, their, their money and their, their exchange accounts and so forth. I think the further away we get, the better it is for crypto, right? Now, the big headwind is going to be when are we going to get the judge's decision on Ripple? When are we going to get the regulation on crypto and find out exactly what it is? I mean, that's kind of the dark gray area here in the cryptocurrency markets. But I think investors are gaining you know, at least the retail crowd is gaining more and more stamina to be back in this market after they really got scared when FTX collapsed. Previously, Visa and MasterCard both partnered with cryptocurrency exchange Binance to issue crypto fiat linked payment cards. Since 2020, Binance's cryptocurrency Visa debit card has been available to residents of the European Economic Area with teaser cashbacks. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.